Look, 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 we ain't come to talk and won't cap it off It be pressure about shine, we can clap it off Niggas say I'm snatching, I don't snatch it off Niggas say we chucking, but we hit your door Pop one, pop two, just to cool them off Spin back, pop three, if it's fucking war Shit ain't stopping this, I'm talking to the Lord We be having conversations, that's my fucking door Told God if they play, I'ma knock them off So just keep me out the way, I cut some niggas off Now I'm out here riding by my dolly, ayy I been outside riding with it on me, ayy Niggas knew I had it when they fucking saw me, ayy Let that nigga start clutching, shot gon' get the brawn, ayy We done spent they fucking blocks, roll the windows down Chain with that shit he with that poppin' out in, in the middle of the street, Brody rockin' out I, I put on for this name, the niggas know me now Good evening, young man, how you doing? Doing great, what about you? Yeah, I'm doing fine, doing fine I see, I'm looking at your windows, it's dark out there where you at Where are you at, in Virginia? Yep, Richmond, Virginia Okay, well, you know, you gotta come out You ever been out here on the West Coast? Say that again? You ever been out here on the West Coast? Mm -hmm. I so. California? Mm, nah. I'm in California. See, you got to come out here, man. You got to, you know, you got to, got to start putting them bells together. Come on out here to Vegas, and then, you know, out here where, where the big boys play at. So mm, definitely, <laughs> definitely gotta go out there sometime. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I see. Uh, uh, I was reading some of uh, uh, your publicity here. You're only 12 years old. Yeah, been boxing for about two years now. Okay, and what got you into boxing? Well, I really like the sport, and even when I was young, I was like, I was doing martial arts as a kid. I used to do taekwondo. Okay. So after I did that, I kind of took a break from many. Anything really like that until about two years ago where I finally tried out boxing. Because I've seen pro fights and stuff, and it looked cool. So I figured I'd try that. So how did you get to the discipline aspect of that? You said you were into martial arts. I mean, you know, the, uh, those things take a lot of discipline, a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of your time. And, uh, you know, I mean. It definitely you know, do. Um, I started when I was like four yeah i was like four and my parents took me to a martial arts class and i did it till i was around like seven or eight then after that i kind of got tired of it and i started moving around other activities like tap dancing and piano but then i moved to boxing and boxing is something that really stuck and you know i've really been doing boxing for a while now like two years okay so basically you like things that have rhythm to them Definitely. Okay. Uh, so, what would you consider your style? Are you a, a, a boxer, a boxer puncher? Or, you know, I like to keep people on the outside. That's really where I shine. Keep them outside with the jab and pick my shots. So, how tall are you, and what weight are you? Well, I fight at the one nineteen um, weight class, and I'm like five seven. 119 already. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. So you so you you're a big young man. Mm, yeah. That's what people say. <laughs> yeah, 12 5, five about 5 7 119. I I would say that qualifies. So uh so who are some of the people that you uh look up to in the ring or Definitely. that you maybe uh, model yourself after? Definitely my favorite boxer would definitely be Shakur Stevenson and the way he uses his jabs and sets up everything. Absolutely insane. Uh, uh, yeah, to go through a whole 12 rounds and what, get hit three times, uh, you know, uh, so, yeah. so, so, so is that, is that also a part of your forte? Yes, I would definitely, like, my jab is my favorite punch. I throw it out the most. I work off of everything with the jab. The jab is like my range finder. It's just everything up. Jab is everything for me. 
Now, uh, in the amateurs, do you fight by weight or do you fight by age? Um, both. So you you don't fight anybody over the age of what thirteen or? So it's two up and two down, I believe. So I can fight someone who's like fourteen and thirteen. Or you, you know, can fight in a uh, weight class. Okay, uh, but so I, I don't imagine you find too many ten year olds in 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 your weight class. Uh, no, I'm not <laughs> <in general. laughs> So, do you find that that a lot of times you're the youngest, the youngest in your weight class to make one nineteen? Yeah, I think the last guy I fought was fourteen. And have coming from martial arts, you know, have you always fought? You know, uh, uh, people that were a little older than you. Yeah, back in Taekwondo, the few times that we did do any type of sparring, I think I uh, was like the youngest there, so it was always someone a little bit older than me. And do you do you take that as a challenge? Yeah, definitely. You know, I can't really use that as an excuse. And w w what's your record? Um, I forgot, but I know I've had like I've had four fights this year, and yeah, about four, about six year. Now, uh, I saw as part of your credentials that you were state champ. Was that this year or last year? That was this year, I believe. Yeah, it was this year. Okay. And and where did you win that that title at? Um, the state was here in Virginia, and the regional was in Georgia, I believe. Okay. And uh, uh, how many fights did you have to win? Uh, did did you have to go through in in how many days? Um, it was one fight for each. Oh, that yeah. <clears throat> Did you have any qualifiers to get there? No, I mean I entered, I entered state. From from there, I had to fight one fight. Then I won that, and I went to regionals, and I won that one fight. Uh, okay, and so, I uh, you know I know usually you know the, the fathers are you know like usually gung ho you know that that's my son so forth and so on, but. How did your mother, you know, take to you, uh, you know, getting in the ring and, you know, being punched and, you know, so forth and so on? Well, she was mostly all for it. I mean, kind of like the same as my dad. Like, that's my son. Yeah. <laughs> like, always the loudest in the crowd. <laughs> so you could always hear it the loudest, huh? Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, how did you get uh, introduced to uh, uh, Treshawn? Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, who, who's your team when you're in the ring? Uh, all right. So um, I met um, Coach Shea at uh, C4 Boxing. That's where I, you know, first started off. And, you know, I went up there to 1913 Sports to train up there with Coach Shea and um, my team, 1913 um, Sports. Got everyone there. You 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 went in and out there for a minute. Could you repeat that? <clears throat> All right. So I first started off at C four and I met Coach Say around there, and he taught me some stuff. Like they're like little um, just like stuff that stuff that were like. He taught me stuff that was like he would talk. He taught me like a lot about my mistakes I was making in the ring, and then taught me how to fix them, and then taught me a lot of stuff that I, I had no clue. Like you could even like they start to think about that in the ring. It was kind of like eye opening. So I went up there to train with him in uh, 1913 sports. So now, uh, 
it was your is your dad a part of your is he your trainer is he a part of your group uh, my dad he does um strength and conditioning with me while i'm not up here in richmond training with my uh my dad does strength and conditioning with when i'm not up here in richmond training with my coach okay now uh, uh <clears throat> i was talking to to, to coach uh your your coach and he tells me that uh you do your classes online yes yeah, so i'm enrolled at liberty university online i skipped a grade um the online aspect makes it a lot easier to be flexible and so i can do school around my training so it's a lot easier to put more time into that while not necessarily sacrificing school so much but you know <clears throat> And one of the, uh, uh, I guess, adverse effects of the COVID uh, pandemic uh, out here in California uh, was the fact that a lot of kids had to go to school online and a lot of uh, kids couldn't you know, keep up with their studies or they found it difficult. How do you find yourself as being the exception to that, where you're able to, uh, I think Coach says, what, you go home uh, every two weeks or something like that? And the yeah. rest of the time you're, you're uh, training? So, um, like, the, the uh, online, like, you know, not being able to keep up and stuff, the school makes it real easy to uh, be able to understand the material still, because even though you can't ask the teacher at the spot, like how to understand this or that, you can still send messages to the teachers and email them and I have them explain the material to you. It's um, a lot of ways to communicate. And and how were you able to make such a seamless transition to, uh, uh, to that uh, uh, routine, you know, uh, and be able to, you know, uh, stay sharp and, and stay in the ring uh, the way that you do? Well, so the school lets you go at your own pace. So meaning you can go ahead or you can skip a, the, like a day in the middle of the week and then make up for that later. So you still got to get everything done, but it can happen at your, like, at your own pace around your own schedule. The only li real limitation to that is you have to submit something in each subject every 30 days or so. You you mentioned uh, a little earlier that uh, uh, you had uh, advanced a grade. So what, uh, are you in junior high school now or high school? I'll be going into ninth grade this year. Okay, okay. Uh, Sixth, fifth. Uh, so now, you know, uh, I'm going to pretend like nobody else is listening to what we're talking here. Going to school remotely, do you miss the girls? So it's pretty much keep keep your nose to the grindstone and, and, and uh, you know, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, I know when I was a lot younger, it was a lot easier uh, for me to keep myself on task uh, if I had fewer distractions around. Uh, is that the way you kind of generally uh, keep your activities down to a minimum? Oh, yeah. It's definitely, I've, like, I've always been focused. So even when I did go to in-person school, I, I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't necessarily, uh, like, so, I wasn't, like, I was focused, so I was studying on everything. Like I didn't play. I never really any other sports. I'm currently no. Boxing is just about it for me right now. Um, in a in my uh, downtime, however, I do do other activities. Like I read a lot, and I definitely recently got into chess quite a bit. Ah, okay, all right. Uh... Do you, do you uh, are you a, a, a scholastic uh, chess player, meaning that you study some of the old masters like Bobby Fischer and whatnot, or do you just kind of you know like uh, uh, 
trying to learn the game as you go? Um, I've definitely been doing a little bit of studying about like uh, different openings. Like I've found a few different resources that I plan on diving into whenever I get the chance. So, so now we found out that you're very cerebral. Uh, you like to stay focused. Uh, so tell us some other things about uh, uh, Jeremiah that, uh, you know, uh, maybe four or five years ago that, you know, we'll look back upon and say, oh, yeah, I remember when, when, when Jeremiah said that. Uh, what's some of the things that you would like the public to know about you that maybe they don't know other than just seeing you in the ring? Um, I like, I like talking about science. That is something that I'm, I just love talking about. And any topic that really interests me, I usually can go on for hours. About, and I also want to be a doctor after my, uh, after I reach all my goals in boxing as well. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> Uh, biological science, you say you want to be a doctor? Yeah, definitely. Um, my goal is to be a neurosurgeon, brain surgeon. You know. The brain has always fascinated me, and I've had um, the goal of being a doctor for a very long time. And recently, I realized that neurosurgery is it. That's the field I want to go into. Okay, now you know that that, that 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 those are kind of the opposites when you look at the sport that you're involved in. Oh yeah, you, know, you, you want to be a neurosurgeon, but you're also getting you know your your brain juggled you know around uh, much like a football player or you know somebody that's susceptible to concussions. Uh, so how do how do you plan to marry those two? I mean. You know, uh, uh you, you know be a champion real early and get out while you still you know while you're still young and able to pursue a career uh and and you know study while, while you're you're still in the field or like i said you know like get out young and and you know retire by the time you're 30 and pursue your career as a neurosurgeon well um from, the goal is to make enough money to pay for medical school, and my personal belief is that I can do all things through Christ. Hey, uh, I hear you, young man. I, you know, uh, it's uh, so. Where do you get your uh, roots from, as far as your religious background and your uh, your faith? <clears throat> So when I did go into in-person school, um, I've always went to um, Christian school. So even from a young age, I've always believed in God. And my parents are also um, Christians as well. So we all read the Bible. We all study God. And we all memorize verses. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, <clears throat> being a, a preacher's kid myself, uh, Many many years ago, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I I can remember you know the the, the different Bible studies, Sunday school, and and whatnot. Uh, so uh, uh, once again, uh, you seem to be very focused. Uh, a young man, only twelve years old, uh, uh, faith in God. Uh, is coach uh, uh, around uh, where I can get both of you at the same time? Oh yeah. How you doing, sir? What's going on there, Coach? How, how's it going? Another thing. <laughs> how's everything? Uh, doing well. Let's see if I can kind of get both of you in 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 in, in the picture here at the same time. I, I want to ask you Better? a couple questions there, uh, Coach. Uh, uh, how did did you find uh, this young man? That uh, you know, a young man, twelve years old, and and so. Uh, focused and grounded at such an early age. Well, honestly, I um I know his father, and I met his father. His father's ex-military, good good gentleman, and his dad kind of came to me and said, "I have a son, and I think that he really wants to stay focused and want to really do this." So I said, "Okay, well, before you send him up here, go ahead and get him in shape and make sure he can handle it." So his dad went ahead, got him in shape, 
And then he said, I think he's ready. And Junior's been up here about six months. About six months, he's been taking leaps and bounds. Definitely. He um, you gotta consider Junior's the youngest on our team by seven years. So he gets no he gets no youth sparring. He doesn't have 16 year olds, 13 year olds he's sparring with. He's only sparring with 19 and up. And it's it's definitely it's definitely going a long way. Now, uh, uh, as I as I was saying, uh, you know, he uh, uh, seems to be very focused on 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 what he's doing, but yet and still, he's uh, also grounded uh, uh, in his family uh, and uh, in uh, his religious life. Uh, <clears throat> how soon, you know, when when we talk of of him being only a, you know a, a, a twelve year old, what? How soon, or you know, how how fast do you think that you'll be able to get him uh, on the national track? Uh, and and one of the reasons why I asked that is because it seems like every year they seem to be getting fewer and fewer. Hundred percent. So honestly, Junior will be on a, this year. Um, we may forego nationals just to get a little bit more training in, but other than that. I don't see him waiting no longer than that. Like you said, he's already a regional champion. There's no reason for him not to be on the national track. It's just it's just now just go ahead and touching up a few things. So like I said, I expect by next year, December, he should definitely be, if not nationally ranked, he should be that kid in, in his weight class. Now, uh, we've had so many changes, and it's been a little hard for me to keep up with them. but. Uh, I would think that uh, are we talking about, of course, hoping that it's still around. Are we talking about uh, a road through the Olympics or a road around the Olympics? Well, honestly, right now it's kind of hard to say. Me and Junior talk about it all the time. And the big thing is when he's of age, where does the Olympics fall? Now, when he turns 19, if he's an Olympic year, then yeah, go to the Olympics, go to the country, go do that. But now if we're talking that the Olympics not, might not fall until he's 22, we got to look at the decision. He's a very smart young man, so boxing is not his only option. So we got to weigh all that in too. There's not too many kids that I could say maintain an AB average who box full time and goes to Liberty University and only at 12. Yeah, re remarkable accomplishments, uh, all, all of that. Uh, uh, Coach, I, I would imagine that kind of keeps you on your toes also. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he has a 45-second limit of what he can talk to me about after he asks the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, how would you... Describe the relationship between you uh, and and young Jeremiah. Um, it's weird because th th there's point there's times where it's where it's, it's coach, and then there's other times where it's big brother. So it's just kind of what needs to be at that point. Sometimes there's times when I have to just I got to dig in. I'm like, look, this is not coach. This is a life lesson, and you got to get it. Then there's other times where it's, we got to break down tactics to you get coach. So it's kind of it's it's both definitely balancing both but i can say what makes it a lot easier very very supportive family. his mom and dad they're they're there they're there now uh, i also got to ask you coach how do you match a 12 year old's energy man i mean you know i know, you know I mean, for me i know you know it, it would definitely be a job and i understand you're a young man but you know I got great grandkids back here, man. I mean, yeah. You know what's crazy? He's not. He's not like that. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Bit Junior's laid back. He doesn't really talk unless he's spoken to. He he watches boxing and he um he's studying he's studying coding on Junior, his free time. Uh, Junior, uh, what about your diet? You know, I mean, you know, uh, how do you manage to keep that, uh, you know, down where, you know, you can you can stay within your weight class? Because I would imagine, you know, all, all it takes is, you know, a couple cookies and cakes and that 119 is 124. Well, the workouts that we do, 
burn a lot of calories. So I would I don't necessarily eat a lot of cake or sweets or anything. What I do is I get everything that is necessary for me in the right proportions. And once you get used to that, it's not so bad. And even and when you work out harder, you, you might be able to eat a little heavier, you know. And then if you like, if you happen to be on an active rest day, you might eat a little bit less. So you you still gotta pay attention to your weight, but as long as you you're not like snacking off in the middle of the night or anything, you should you might be fine. Now, where where do you anticipate uh, your weight being said? Uh, 12, 14, say 16. What would you like? What, what weight class would you like to be in four years from now? Mm, I don't really know. I really don't know. Uh, coach, look, looking at, at, at uh, Junior's body and his, his style, uh, what would you think, uh, you know, in, in, in four years? I mean, you know, it's evident that, uh, you know, he, he has, he's going to have a frame where he's going to put on more weight, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we're not even talking about an, an adult yet because he's only 12 years old. 100%. You know, but, uh, I, I'm yeah. seeing Junior being more of like a natural welterweight. The reason I say that is because when I first got Junior, he was fighting at 136. 138. Right around 138, 140 pounds when I first got him. And that was six months ago, and he's also grown three to four inches. So in six months, he's grown three inches and lost. <laughs> so and Very I, unique. <laughs> so I, I say he easily has another three to four inches to grow. So the goal, if 16, if he's right around that 135, 140, I, I, I would see that, but it's really just whatever his body does. It, 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 you know, at this age, it's a guessing game. And 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 right now, uh, you know, do you see, you know, what what do you think is his best asset? I mean, we were talking earlier, uh, and he was talking about his use of the jab. Uh, so, you know, I mean, was that something that he came to you with, or was that something that you improved on? Well, I mean, Junior. I say this, I think not just Junior, all my fighters, what they have is what they have, and we just work on what they have, and we just try to get it better. So Junior's always had his jab. We just tightened it up a little bit. But I think his brain, he's, he's a smart kid. And, you know, when you're, when you're a certain level of smart, how you can dissect a fight is 100% different. He's not watching, per se, Earl Spence's and people like that. He's watching the Nigel Benz, the, um, the Georgie Benson's, He's watching those type of fighters, you know, where the fights are still in black and white, and that level of that um, that level of thought is just different. There's not too many kids who are, are willing to, even if they love boxing, to watch a black and white fight. Uh, I I was uh, when I was looking at that, you know, or thinking about you know uh, uh, his frame and and the jab, it, it kind of Mark Vigeland came to mind. Mark Brillen was another great right out of Brooklyn, New York, went to all Bronx. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, kind of showing my age there, but. Uh. <laughs> no, <I got> that. <laughs> Mark Brillen was a great. Everybody yeah. knows him for coaching, but he's a great boxer, had a great amateur career also. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the great amateurs that never really was able to, to, to make that transition. Well, he won uh, a world champion. He won a world title. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, you know, when when you looked at at his amateur career, and you know, I mean, it was you know, understandable. Uh, understandable. You know, <clears throat> you know uh, what kind of defense does the young man have? So that's a big thing we've been working on. Um, he had a bad habit where he just liked to block a lot of punches. So now he's learning how you block and respond. So that's kind of now the new thing where he's putting it together, where instead of just blocking your punches, now he's responding and punching in between punches. Uh, okay. 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 So, uh, you're all, he's also able to uh, kind of take up that boxing encyclopedia and add to his game. hundred percent every day, every day. If he's not adding, he's not doing something right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, I'm going to take a, a couple minutes here with you in a uh, minute uh, here, Coach. But uh, 
uh, I wanted to spend a couple last minutes here with uh, uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah, so uh, what are your aspirations? Uh, uh, we know you want to be a doctor. Uh, uh, coach just said that you, you, you're studying coding. Uh, so you have a, a, a myriad of, of uh, uh, interests. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and, and that's something else that we don't uh, uh, see uh, with here within in the boxing game, especially with, with young men. So tell us a little bit uh, more about yourself. Do you have any siblings? Uh, you know, that there's, uh, do you come from a boxing family? Uh, let us get a little bit more to know a little bit more about uh, Jeremiah Jr. Got you. I've one sibling. Her name is Naila. She's uh definitely very supportive. Of this, like, she loves coming to see me boxing and matches, or coming up here um, to watch me train. Love her, man. She's awesome. Um, how old is she? She's nine right now. Okay. So you so you also got big brother duties. Yeah. Oh man, see you know, I got seven sisters. I know I know what that's about, you know. Even now, at this age. Yeah. <laughs> they they'll, they'll always be little sisters, believe me. But you know. <laughs> so so uh, uh do you hear her in the background too when you when you when you're fighting? Oh yeah, for sure. If it's not my <laughs> Then it's her. <laughs> uh, One of them. So, uh, did did you come up in a family of boxers? I mean, you know, what what made you make that transition from uh, martial arts, uh, which is uh, probably a much more, I, I would say, mental uh, uh, discipline to 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 come into something that is actually, you know, I mean. It, to me, you know, I, I've never understood, you know, uh, you know how much uh, fortitude it must take to come into a gym every day and have to put on those gloves. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, mo most of us have enough trouble just fighting in life, and, and you know, one one day after another, putting one foot in the, uh, ahead of uh, another, you know. What, what 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 are some of the things that that make you get about? You know, I mean, you know, do you, do you have family? Do you you know what 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 motivates Jeremiah? Well, I gotta go and achieve my goals because e even being a doctor, that's not even, that's not easy either. So, you know. Hard. Oh, a neurosurgeon? You mean I can't? I can't go down to, to the library and pick up neurosurgeon for dummies and? <laughs> I wish it was <laughs> that easy. But, uh, yeah, either way, hard work was never something that I was gonna do well without. So, boxing is the same thing. You know, you got you got goals, and you have to do what you got to do to meet them. You know. Um, like even being a doctor, you gotta go through all those years of medical school. You gotta build your college. You gotta go to the uh, uh, specialty, the like specialty. Like you got like years just for the field you're going into, and then you have like your residency and all that. So even all of that, um, yeah, right, right. Like, you know, if you started today, you'd be looking at what, like 22, 24 before you got to to be a, a neurosurgeon. That that's that's quite a specialty there. Probably older than that, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> you gotta get all you gotta get your doctorate, then you got pre med, then medical school. Well, yeah, a lot of years of education. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I also believe I saw that your mom runs your social media. Oh, yeah. She's the one who gets all the posts up and everything. You uh, know. I still have, I, you know, I still, you know, 
get the content. But <laughs> he's he's the one posting everything and all that stuff. All right, so let's see. Uh, so so dad uh, uh, makes sure she had a, a trainer. Mom takes care of the publicity. And uh, little sister takes care of the cheerleading. You, you, you got a whole uh, team right there already in place. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, like, uh, let, let me let you go. Uh, I know this is part of your free time. You don't get that much. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, any final thoughts for us? Uh, you got any social media you want us to, to, to know about? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, jr underscore da underscore boxer. You can find me on there. And any final thoughts for our audience? Um, definitely was. This is only my my second uh name, but like def I definitely had like a um. This was definitely a great experience, and I'm definitely glad you have shared all this stuff. Oh, hey man, look, uh, we intend to have you back for years. Uh, you know, I'm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I I figure at the very most, uh, let's see, uh, I'm 75 now, so I got about 26 more years to be here. So I should be talking to Dr. Jeremiah Monroe uh, before I, I decide to uh, go on uh, to that next life. So I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to so I'm looking forward to having a whole lot of years of talking with you, young man. You have a great night. You too. Like Yay. Comment. Mommy. Subscribe. Share.